everyone. Welcome to Lunch Break with ATI. My name is Cindy Collins. I'm one of the co-founders here at Actors Theatre of Indiana, the resident professional theater company at the Center for the Performing Arts in Carmel. How are you? Excellent. Today, my guests are Jamie Hopwood and Greg Wazinski, otherwise known as Hopwood and Wazinski. They're going to take that on the road. <laughs> <laughs> They're touring pretty soon. Uh, anyway, listen, so these two gentlemen are from Feinstein's. Feinstein's is the cabaret at the Hotel Carmichael, where uh, we have performed multiple times and where we also have our partnership with Feinstein's, ATI Live at Feinstein's. So um, we've been doing that. This is our second year with the cabaret. And if you have never been there, I must tell you, go. It's a lovely space. The hotel itself is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and Feinstein's is downstairs, and it is fashioned after 54 Below, which is Michael's place, Michael Feinstein's place in New York City. And, um, and it's just a lovely, lovely venue to perform in. And I have performed in it multiple times, and I've also sat and watched cabarets over there. So it's lovely either way. So here we go. You two guys. First thing, let me let me just ask you before we get into all the mishigash about Feinstein's and what's going on over there and this, that, and the other thing. Um, where do you hail from, Jamie? Where are you from? So I'm originally from Lexington, Massachusetts, uh, in okay. southern New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, being in the hotel business, I uh, called many other states uh, home uh, during my journey. Um, Colorado um, was home twice. Uh, lived up in Beaver Creek area, which is, uh, as I would say, God's country. Yeah. Uh, really yeah. beautiful. Um, spent some time down in Texas, um, wow. in Cincinnati area. Um, and then uh, I married an amazing woman uh, from the Midwest. And so as we started to grow a family, um, no better place to uh, to move to than Carmel, Indiana. So you, are you so, in Carmel? Yeah, so we've okay. lived in Carmel for a little okay. bit over the past 12 years. Okay. So right. love the schools and, and what the what yes. the city's done. I agree with so. you. The school system is excellent. Yeah. We have a kid in the school system in high school and it's very mm -hmm. good. The public yeah. schools are excellent here. Yeah. Um, you really, like you lived, yeah. so, I mean, you, yeah. you're like an actor. You went and worked yeah. everywhere. So five you states know? in seven years. Yeah. So oh, at, at that point, my wife said, just let's, let's go back to the Midwest. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Massachusetts is nice too. I mean, yeah. I'm an East Coaster. So I yeah. mean, yeah, there's, yeah. there's, I do, there's miss, I do miss the lobster. I'm still trying to, still trying yeah, to. Yeah, you can get it. that here. <laughs> I mean, they ship it in, you yeah. know, and you can still get some good lobster here, but I know there's, oh God. Right? There's nothing like going to those restaurants yeah. back home. I'm from Jersey and just, oh, I know. And Maine lobster is excellent too. I mean, it's just, there's nothing like it. Um, so, Greg, so, where are you from? So, um, I called Chicago home, born and raised there uh, for most of my life. Yeah. Um, spent a little bit of time in the South Bend area yeah. for a couple years in high school. Um, went to Penn High School, so go Kingsman. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, as, as Jamie did, um, he uh, I've also traveled a lot uh, and yeah. moved around the country working in the hospitality industry um, and did some consulting uh, for some restaurant breweries type setups. Yeah. So I've moved around a lot, uh, but definitely found my home here in uh, central Indiana. Did you, um, and uh, Jamie, was it was it with Marriott that you were working on? Was it just different? Yeah. Everybody, yeah. all different so, hotels. So I started out with Marriott my first, yeah. my first six years of my career was with Marriott, and then I joined Rock Resorts and Vail Resorts Lodging, um, and then later on, a company called Arbor Lodging, um, okay. before I was with Corey, and right. what an amazing company. Yeah. So it's and now you're back with Marriott, well, yeah. because well, the Hotel Mar Carmichael's yeah. under the Marriott yeah. umbrella. So most of my career has been managing all Marriott okay. hotels, yeah. even though I work for those the franchisees. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Management companies. yeah. And so mm -hmm. when they built the car, the, when they were building the hotel, mm -hmm. okay, um, and you lived here. Yep. And you were here too. Were you here at the time? Uh, no, I, I came shortly after it opened. Okay. So, um, so Jamie, when you were here and they were building it, did you jump for that? Did you put in for that job? Or were they like, Mary, yeah. I, this is our guy, Jamie. So, so I think it's, a, it's an interesting story. I was a VP of operations for a hotel company out of Chicago at the time. Okay. And so I was traveling. Um, I had three hotels in California. I had one in New Orleans. I had one in Des Moines, Iowa. Oh. One in Milwaukee. Um, one in Cleveland and one in Massachusetts. So my week would 
would basically entail either driving up to Chicago or I'd be on a plane going somewhere across the United States. Um, So, and I really wanted to get back into managing an individual property, um, a high-end boutique uh, that I loved when I was in Vail. Um, So to see this and, and hear the vision of what uh, right. what the mayor had yeah, and really start to see it come together, um, it made me start to go, okay, they announced the management company that was going to manage the hotel. Um, so I reached out to uh, Tad Stricker, who was the VP of operations at the time. I had worked with him before. So you knew him. Okay, and, so you had uh, a connection. And, right? and so I said, uh, Tad, tell me a little bit more about this, yeah. this opportunity. Yeah. And the more I learned, uh, I sat down and met with Paul. Um, who's the CEO of Corey Hospitality. Mm. And uh, then I had an uh, interview with the mayor. Uh-oh. And uh, and uh, everything that I wanted to hear about the property was what was happening with it. Mm. And uh, it's an unbelievable asset. I couldn't I, I be more proud of it for our city. I agree. Um, and, and to represent that and be the general manager and every day, um, I try to do the best that, that we can do yeah. to make sure that that asset shines. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely hotel. I mean, yeah. I've stayed there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we when it was first built, um, Judy and I, Judy Fitzgerald, one of the other co-founders and also my partner, we're like, we're going to go stay there. We're yeah. gonna, we're, we, we, we really should do this. Yeah. You know, and, and it was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it was lovely just to go and be a guest yeah. there, you mm-hmm. know, and the bar and the lobby is great. Yeah. I'll tell you, the mixologists there are fantastic. We have great bartenders at the hotel. Downstairs at Feinstein's, upstairs in the in the hotel, in the bar there in the lobby, really wonderful. Um, and so, okay, so done. You got the job, yeah. right? <laughs> you got the job. I did, yeah. Yes. So there you are. Here's here's my question. There are, um, you know, to running a cabaret space in the Midwest. Yeah. Okay. Now the hotel is one thing, right? You have a hotel, it's lovely, but you have a cabaret space. Not easy. There are challenges. And there are challenges because um, people here in the Midwest don't even don't understand cabaret all the time. No, no offense, but it's an education it's yeah. an educational process. Um, we know this because of our, our theater company and certain things we try to do, and it's constantly educating the public. Um, and so when it first opened, and um, and I remember we performed over there one of the first times when when it when the when the cabaret opened. Um, what were the challenges? Getting people in, getting people in that people kind of know here, or just yeah. to educate them about the artists that mm-hmm. are coming in. I mean, I know we do. Yeah. You know? And I, I think that's a, I mean, from a cabaret space, right? I think my first, um, my f- first experience in a similar space to that was when I went to New York and mm-hmm. went to 54 yeah. Below. Yeah. And um, talking to John Iketty, who yes. is one of our consultants out yeah. of New York that works uh, very closely with Michael mm-hmm. and Terrence. Um, and, and I think that was a big part of our mission right from the beginning is, is how do we communicate the cabaret piece to an audience that might not be familiar with And they're not. And it's about building that trust, really, mm-hmm. the trust that the, the quality of the entertainers that we're going to put in that space right. might not be a name that you know, but it's an well, act. They have to take it, a chance. It's, it's taking an act a chance that's going to really, really be able to yeah. move you emotionally, and that's part of the cabaret experience is really being able to have that intimate connection. There's no with, other, yeah, with the audience. There's, there's no. <laughs> it is the most intimate form of performing. Yeah. is the cabaret. It is yeah. the most intimate connection between that performer and the audience. Yeah. Is is the cabaret genre. Yeah. Yeah. And the storytelling that pulls Absolutely. in to the musical piece, I think, is, is such a key, integral part mm-hmm. of, of what the performers do day in and day out yeah. in that space. Yeah, it's not, and it's not, not all performers, I will say, not all performers, act, you know, mus- they, not everybody likes, not everybody likes to do that, because yeah. it's really, you're stepping out, it's you, mm-hmm. it's so raw, yeah. I mean, it's just you, you're not hiding behind a character, yeah. you are, and a lot of, um, I will say a lot of performers, they don't like it. Mm-hmm. They don't want to do it. I started doing cabaret when I was 21 in New yeah. York. So I I was never afraid of it. You know yeah. what I mean? So I I like it. Yeah. But, um, but not everybody does. You know, it's not for everybody. And it's not for everybody to go see either. Yeah. However, you're missing out if you don't go see something mm-hmm. over at Feinstein's. It, honestly, just for the experience. And that's what it is. It's an experience. And that's what you try to make 
from a, the performing arts. It's not just, I'm going to see a show, I'm going to see an artist perform, I'm going to see a concert. It's the entire experience. And I think the minute you walk even into that hotel, it's an experience. Yeah. And it smells so good in there. I don't know what that, I don't know what that, that incense is or whatever it is mm -hmm. that the hotel uses, but you leave smelling like it for a few days. Yeah. Me, I don't mind because it's just smells. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, how can I buy a cologne like this? So there, but, so there is candles that you can buy in the gift shop. So if you haven't gotten one, no, uh, absolutely. Hello. So uh, it's a little, little yeah. hotel Carmichael that you can take home. Oh my gosh, who uh, knew? Because the I'm never there thinking about shop. You know, I'm always there. I gotta go. You know, yeah. we're always there performing. Um, so here's okay. So coming up, you have a few really, really cool stuff coming mm -hmm. up actually. Right. Um, one of them is uh, a gentleman that, that we presented at the Center for the Performing Arts, Craig A. Meyer, um, does a, an Elton John show. And we presented Craig last, um, hold on, what's the, what, what it is, thank you. We presented him in March, okay, at the Palladium. It was a great show. It was fantastic for Actors Theatre of Indiana and also for Craig because he was he's from here. Yeah. So absolutely. Carmel High School grad and he's never come here to perform. So um so here, you know, here he was. We brought him and and had him perform at the Palladium and it was marvelous. And now he's going to do your New Year's Eve show yeah. at Feinstein's. But there's no way he can bring everybody. So who's mm -hmm. who's he bringing? Just himself? Is he bringing, who, who else is he, any of his backup singers, anything? Nope, he is just bringing himself. Um, he is performing as Craig Myers, as his, uh, My Life is Elton John. Okay. Um, so with a little less of the Elton bling. Well, that's what I'm saying, because it's, flavor. right, yeah. that's the thing, because hi, yeah. with his Elton show, it's, you can imagine, right? You can imagine if anyone saw it, he does full on Elton from the 70s, yeah. like all his great stuff, right? So he's mm -hmm. on top of the piano. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's, you know, he's got his full band. His two backup singers are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but then we were thinking about that. We're like, okay. How, how, okay. Does, how does that fit Okay, the how is he doing? <laughs> What's he going to do at Feinstein's? Yeah. It's got to be just like either him and it, the piano, that's yeah. it, mm -hmm. or him and maybe a combo. We won't, you know, we were trying to figure it out. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah, he's, he's unbelievably talented. Oh, um, and, and again, it will be very, very focused around Elton. Correct. Um, and yeah. some great storytelling. Yeah, some good yeah. storytelling with that. Yeah, yeah. He's got tying some, yeah. in that cabaret piece and, yeah. and his personality coming out. I mean, he's traveled all over the world oh. performing as Elton John. I know. And I think to have that in that space on New Year's Eve, it will be pretty special. Oh, I think it'll be a blast. So, yeah. I mean, how much fun? Is he two nights? Uh, no, just one night, what? but two shows. Two shows. Yeah. So we have, okay. uh, we have the first show. Um, that starts earlier on in the evening. And then we have the second show that brings in the new year. Of course. And, and that's just, um, right. Okay. And we did that last year with uh, Melissa Manchester. That's right. Um, and that was extremely successful. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's starting to become one of those things that um, is an attraction to do here in Carmel on New Year's Eve. I think it's a great idea. So, and as long as you get somebody who's, see, Craig is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. He's perfect for New Year's Eve. Yep. He's fun, he's funny. T talented is all get out, mm -hmm. right? And so I think I think that's going to be. I mean, like you said, what almost sold out. Correct? There's only a handful of tickets left. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> if you haven't purchased your tickets, hello. Do it now. <laughs> Craig is excellent, and he is a super nice guy. He will. I mean, he's super super nice. He's so gracious with the audience. Um, and it, he'll. Uh, I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but he's. He'll take photos all over the place. I mean, so he, you know, he he'll take photos with people. He's happy to do so. He's he's just such a warm, loving guy. And you also have um, the people that know him here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah. so you know, I mean, you so you you have that too, which yeah. is what we counted on as yeah. well, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's 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 going to be awesome. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. So before that, okay, that's New Year's Eve. Um, you got we got you guys have a pretty and we're in there Christmas yep. lineup mm -hmm. <laughs> like everybody's Christmas cabaret is yep. over there Mark yep. Mark William who's coming back um right uh, no no Mark Williams uh that show isn't happening but we do have 
which just sold out. So uh, yeah. the Wright brothers uh, picked up that Saturday for us. Okay. Was, yeah. So the Wright brothers, hi. Yeah. They're doing kind of, I'm sure, a Christmassy yeah. kind of feel. Right? Uh, and then kind of a farewell It's show. a farewell tour. Well, I know, because they're, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're not so. doing a, a, a lot of stuff anymore, yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, that'll be nice in that setting. Yeah. And I'm sure they'll, you know, it's almost like with this, those guys doing them, um, it's farewell, but of course you have to do holiday stuff. I mean, it's going to be right mm -hmm. in December, so I'm yeah, sure they're, they're going to do something. They're very something. patriotic, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, oh, they, they, oh, totally, yeah, totally patriotic. I know, um, and that's that's great. And, and then um, Frank and Barosha. Oh yeah, Frank, that's yeah. right. He's coming back. Yeah, I mean, twenty five hundred over twenty five hundred. Um, yeah. Phantoms perform, um, perform that he's oh, done on Broadway. Yeah. And, oh my gosh, unbelievably yeah. talented. Yeah. Um, I had the privilege. Um, the um, there was a fundraiser uh, that was done for uh, to raise funds for Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, that he came out and did a private event, and I had the privilege of uh, seeing him um, in an intimate setting. Um, not only, I mean, he's performed at our club uh, multiple times. Yeah, now, I know he has. Um, yeah, but he's so amazing. And yeah. if if you haven't had the opportunity to see him perform in person, yeah. um, it's definitely a show that's not worth it. Yeah, worth no question. I, I, I know he's very, very popular. Like that, yeah. um, in a very long time, watching him perform. Yeah, the last time he was in town was amazing. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I remember that because I think we were there. We were doing something after that, and and, mm -hmm. and uh, I know that he does very well. Yeah, at, he sounds at the amazing. Cabaret. Yeah. 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 Looks great while he does it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. But and let's then, not forget about um, it's ATI. We're doing, we're uh, hol yeah, we're doing ATI Celebrates the Holidays. It's our um, second time doing our holiday cabaret over at Feinstein's. It is December 15th and 16th, Thursday and Friday night. Have very, um, very few tickets left for that also. Yeah, so that, that, usually that, does, uh, that usually does pretty well for us. We do the two mm -hmm. nights. Um, we mix it up. Uh, we mix, we, we do some of our, you know, traditional repeat uh, numbers, but we always mix it up with new with new music, new people. Uh, this year it's myself, Judy Fitzgerald, and Matt Brannock. And Matt is a wonderful, so excellent performer. Matt. yeah. Matt's a great guy. Uh, he was just in our production of Violet, and Matt has done uh, concerts with us before. And he is a whiz on the guitar, so we're gonna see a little bit of that. Um, we have Terry Woods. On the piano, Terry is uh, absolutely wonderful. One of our musical directors, and um, and our bass and drummer are are brand new coming in for just this holiday show. And we have Carmel's elite acapella group, Select Sound, and they will join us for the third time because the first time we ever did the show was a drive-in outside yeah. during the pandemic. We did it. Um, we were doing our drive-in series, and it was outside, and um, so that was the first time we did our our holiday. Was uh, the celebrate one that. on Square Parking Lot, right? Yes, in the parking lot on the on the city's city stage that yeah. they would give us for yeah. every one of those drive-ins, and that was so much fun that year. It was we had reindeer. Beautiful, beautiful weather too. It was a gorgeous that time night. <laughs> it was it was beautiful. It was cold, but it was mm -hmm. gorgeous. We had a reindeer who almost gored Santa and, and down the parking lot, but it was all good. Gosh. Grandmother was okay though. Oh she my gosh, she didn't get run over, but Santa almost did. Oh my gosh. But we'll have Santa again this year, and we actually have another uh, special guest that will be showing up uh, this year, but I'm not going to say anything about that. But it's just going to be fun. You know, mm -hmm. it's a fun cabaret. Uh, we love, love singing that music. And I think, like everybody does during the holidays, it's it's just a fun time. Everybody likes singing that type of music. Everybody has different arrangements of all those different songs. Mm -hmm. That they do, I you know, and and so that's what makes it fun also mm -hmm. to do the the multiple different arrangements of jingle bells or mm -hmm. have yourself a merry little Christmas or anything you know. It, it, there's just such a, a a vast variety that you can do as a performer. So we're looking forward to it. I know, and um, you guys, that's our week. yeah, you guys really have a wonderful wonderful lineup for the holidays. I have to say, and you're doing a great job over there. And like I said, it's it's not easy. I think it's easy. It's not. Yeah. It's the performing arts, but it's also cabaret. So it's really, like I said, there are challenges. But it's here, yeah. and it's staying, and it's here to stay. And thank goodness for you know Carmel and supporting the arts because mm -hmm. it's in a, uh, the best location it can be in is in Carmel. So please come and see everything Carmel has to offer. The Chris Kringle Macht is during that this time. So it's all crazy over there. There's so much going on. Oh my gosh, and um. You know, in the Performing Arts Center, and we're having our cabaret, and everybody that's going to be at Feinstein's. So, um, 
So please, you know, there's plenty to do. Get out and do it. Get out. Get out and support the arts, please. It's it's very important. And you know what? You'll be better off for it, right? Absolutely agreed. Yep. Yes. After you after you leave a, a, a live performance, there's nothing like it. You're uplifted. And you discuss and you talk about it and it's filled with discussion and, and then at Feinstein's you can sit there and hello, have cocktails along with that. What's That's better? Dinner. What's and dinner? Exactly. You can go for dinner if you like beforehand. Doors open, always yeah. open at 530. 530. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And chef, Chef's done an amazing job um, of curating uh, different menus. So we do have Good. a rotation of curated menus. Oh, excellent. And um, we've made some adjustments uh, in the kitchen to really be able to elevate that uh, dining experience yeah, that's on the fine side. Because like I said, it's a whole experience, um, it's right? It's really, really about kind of tying that culinary experience into yeah. the amazing music that we have. So um, I'm excited uh, in all the improvements and and uh, and headway that we've made on improving the menu in there. Well, because it's like I said, it's it's education for everyone. Yeah. What's working? Mm -hmm. What's not working? Mm -hmm. We go through that all the time. What yeah. worked? What didn't work? Oh my gosh, we're not going to do that again. We're going to keep doing this. Yeah. It's the same thing everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you're feeling things out yeah. too, right? Yeah. I mean, you're you know. We wanted the guest experience to be a little bit more immersive as well. So we just redid our cocktail menu to have some fun tableside activations. So, you know, again, you, you can take a picture and, and feel good about posting on Instagram. It's not just the, your standard run-of-the-mill martini or anything like I, that. I, and that I believe. That I believe. Because I've had the drinks over there. <laughs> They're very good. Um, always after the performance. Um, that's it. I mean, thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Come to Feinstein's. Um, continue to support Actors Theater of Indiana. Uh, our holiday cabaret over there, December 15th and 16th. Uh, don't forget also New Year's Eve. Almost sold out mm -hmm. for Craig A. Meyer. And, um, and everything else, the Wright Brothers, everything that's going on. So thank you so much. Again, I'm Cindy Collins, one of the co-founders here at Actors Theater of Indiana. And uh, we will see you next week for our next Lunch Break with ATI podcast. Toodaloo. Thank you.